One of my favorite movies of all time would have to be Totoro. It's a great uh, Miyazaki flick that uh, has really fun characters and a really great story. Well, this is a scene, this image is from a scene in the movie where Totoro, this character right here, uh, has an umbrella and as the rain drops down on it and makes the splashing noise, he gets really excited. He likes the, the sound of the, the rain on the umbrella. So I thought it might be fun to uh, take a look at how to cr recreate or how to create uh, raindrop splashes inside of Lightwave. So let's go ahead and close that down. And I've got a default scene of Lightwave here. And I'm going to start by moving over to the Items tab. And let's create some rain. So I'm going to go over to Dynamic Objects and choose Particle. And this is going to be our rain particle emitter and I'll move over the panel here. So I'm gonna take um, let's let's change the birth rate to um, 30 let's do 30 a second. I'm gonna change the size effect. I like it being set at a default of no change so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then for the emitter let's um, let's increase the size of the emitter so I'm going to make it uh, 4 by 4 and we'll raise this up and we'll push play and take a look at what's happening. So we got uh, some particles that are being generated but we want them to fall down like rain. So I'm going to go ahead and keep the, uh, the timeline running so that we can just see in real time what happens. So in motion let's make the velocity let's say negative four just to see okay so now we've got some rain dropping down okay and that looks to be like it's at a a good enough rate so I'm gonna go ahead and pause this and let's do this so I have the rain dropping and we need it to splash on something so I'm gonna go ahead and create a collision object so let's close this items dynamic objects and let's choose collision and this is going to be our ground. So I hit OK. And for our ground, instead of a sphere, I'm going to choose plane. And I'm going to drop that plane to zero so that it's right here at the origin. Okay, and by default, it's the mode is going to be bounce. So let's push play. And we can see that the particles are hitting the collision object but they're not really bouncing so let's take the bounce and let's make that 150 okay so there we go so now they're bouncing up but that's really not what the raindrops would do they would actually splash so instead of having them bounce like that I'm gonna set that back to a hundred and they're definitely not just gonna sit and fall there I'm gonna have them when they hit instead of bounce I'm gonna say erase so they're going to hit and then they're just going to disappear. We're going to make them splash, but for right now, let's just go ahead and have this. We're going to replace each one of these particles with a splash. Uh, we're, we're basically killing them at this point. We're saying when they hit there, their particle life, the lifetime, goes away. It's, it, they're gone. And we'll use that to our advantage. I'm going to go ahead and close this. Pause. And let's make a new particle emitter. I'm going to zoom out a little bit just so we can see what we're doing and move over to items dynamic object particle let's make this splash okay and we've got our splash I'm gonna I'm gonna move it over just so that it's out of the way and I'm gonna parent the splash particle emitter to the rain particle emitter so I'll hit M for motion options and under parent item I'm gonna choose rain we can go ahead and close that so that if I were to move this you can see that the splash particle emitter moves with it that's how we'll know that it's what it's parented so for this emitter I'm gonna start by changing the size effect to no change which is a default I like to work with and then for generate by I'm gonna change that to frame and I'm going to change this to 30. So 30 particles are going to generate every frame, but they're only going to generate when the nozzle is parent emitter end. So when a particle dies, it's going to generate the um, 
the, the particles from this emitter. And let's go ahead and leave those settings. For lifetime, we'll go ahead and go with 60. For motion, let's set the vibration. Let's start, I usually like starting around 3 and going from there. And then we're also going to have them shoot up a little bit. So uh, I'll just try 2 meters in the Y. And then let's give it some gravity, negative 2. So it'll shoot up, but then the gravity will pull it back down. So let's take a look at uh, what happens when we run this. Go ahead and push play. So as each particle dies, let's zoom in so we can get a good look at this. As each particle dies, they're creating the splash. Okay, and I can go in and I can do some adjustments to this. I can decide that maybe um, the motion is just going to be one. Maybe the vibration is going to be six. Maybe the motion should be four. Let's see. Wow, that's pretty extreme. You can see. And uh, so I'm going to bring that back down to two. Maybe it's just creating way too many particles. I'm going to bring the vibration back down to, to three. And for the birth rate, I'm going to change this to 15. I'm going to cut it in half. Okay. And uh, I'm also going to go and see about... Let's see, I just want to adjust some of these things. Uh, for the parent motion, see how some of them are just shooting off? It's almost like uh, someone's firing a gun from those locations. Well, watch what happens when I change the parent motion. We don't have that anymore because it's not using, what was happening is it was using the direction that the, the particle was falling in. It was using the parent's motion, the parent in this case would be each one of those particles, uh, to help drive what direction it should be firing in. So now that I've got that fixed, it, it makes it look so much better. Uh, it is a little extreme. So I am going to go back now that I have that setting. I'm going to go ahead and change my velocity to one meter and then my vibration let's see if I tone that down now this is looking much better so as you can see I've got my rain emitter that's raining down particles on this um, collision object that is not set to bounce it's set to erase which means that it's going to take see in the the particle emitter panel where it says life lifetime frame it's 60 frames let's go ahead and I'm gonna pause this and set the lifetime to 120 okay and then I'm gonna go ahead and push play so by default the particles would die off at um, 60 frames okay actually let's compare it to uh, this one I'm gonna close this panel down P for properties open this up and so I'm gonna have the uh, the lifetime of the particles, I'm going to change that to 90. Okay, I could change it to, and then let me, now that I've changed that, I'm going to hit the um, calculate. Instead of calculate here, we have two options. I could calculate here, and that's going to do the calculation. Sometimes it'll just play through and you don't have to actually hit the calculations. But, uh, Another way of doing it is the IKB calculate, which is the IK booster calculate. Well, that calculates it as well. So if you didn't have this panel open, you could calculate there. So it doesn't matter what I set my um, lifetime to, because when, when the particle hits this collision object, it's going to erase them, which is the same as them coming to the end of their life. Let's change that back to 60, and we'll take a look. So there's our rain coming from our rain emitter. We've got the other emitter, which we called splash, parented to this um, rain emitter so that it can generate its particles based on when each one of these particle dies. So there we go with a quick easy setup of making rain splash down or you know fall down hit the ground and send some particles splashing up. Don't forget that if you wanted it to be something like this umbrella or a character or anything like that, you're not limited to a flat plane uh, for your collision object. You can turn any object into a collision object. You can also change your default shape of collision objects to a sphere and box and things like that. So I was showing it with a flat plane, but if you wanted to, you could model an umbrella like this or this 
and turn that into your collision object. Set that to erase and as the particle hits that it's going to erase the particle and a splash will be created where it's being erased. So there you go. Rain with splashes and light wave.